There are many situations where running the entire design homogeneously just isn't possible. Sometimes it takes more than one day or you use more than one batch of raw material, etc. Essentially, there is some other cause of variation that needs to be controlled for. As we saw previously, we will block in order to do this. We also could block to expand the inference space of the results. There is more than one type of blocking. There are times that we block out of necessity. This is done so that outside sources of variation do not affect our results. The other time we block is to increase the validity of the results of the experiment. Usually we use this when we have more than one category of experimental unit and we wish our results to hold over all of the categories. Take for example an experiment where the goal is to maximize the miles per gallon in a vehicle. So we set up our experiment only using cars. If we wanted our results to hold also over trucks, we could block on vehicle type and include some trucks in our experiment. A factor that could add unwanted variation to the results of an experiment is considered a nuisance variable. Think about the consequences for some experiments if we do not block. A block factor is a nuisance factor that we know about and can control. If we are not able to control the variable, then it is considered a covariate. If the nuisance variable is unknown and uncontrollable, then we hope that randomization will balance out its impact on the response. When we block out of necessity, it is considered a restriction on randomization. This means that there is no randomization across blocks. So we can run block one, then two, then three, etc. For example, we cannot run the treatment combinations for day two before we run all of the ones on day one. Although we are restricted on randomization across a block, we are not restricted within a block. Therefore, we should try as much as possible to randomize within a block. Since we do not consider the block a factor of interest, we do not need to test it for significance. Also, since we are not randomizing across the levels of a block, some of the assumptions for the F-test may not hold. If we have replication in a design, we try to run a replicate within each block. Our goal is to have variability between blocks be larger than variability within blocks. This type of design is called a randomized complete block design. Here is an example where we have two factors, each at two levels, with three replicates for a total of capital N equal to 12 runs. There is a restriction that only four runs can be made from a single batch. In this case, we would need to run three batches. Now, the naive experimenter would just run the experiment. You should realize that there could be batch-to-batch -batch variation that in could inflate our estimate of the error. So we will block on batch to remove the variation from our results. Notice here that this is a randomized complete block design since we have a full replicate run in each block. In this case, we would get two degrees of freedom for the block. This is because the degrees of freedom for block is always the number of levels of the block minus one. Here's the formula for the sums of squares for block. Here is the output for the example. Notice that Minitab in this case is testing the block effect. Also, the sums of squares for block is more than 25% of the sums of squares for error. This means that had we not taken out the block effect, then our error estimate could be overinflated and we may have come to the wrong conclusions. In this case, we need to confound the blocks with an effect. We should choose a higher order interaction since these are the least likely to be real. This is considered an incomplete block design since each block does not contain a full replicate. Let's look at an example. Let's look at an example with three factors in two blocks. Since we have one degree of freedom for blocks, we need to choose one effect to confound with the block. In this case, we will choose the ABC interaction. This means we will set all of the runs where ABC is at a minus in one block and all of the runs where ABC is at a plus in the other block. Let's return to our filtration example. This example had four factors. Now we assume that only eight runs can be produced under homogeneous conditions. Let's set this up using a block on batch of raw materials. We will confound the block with the interaction ABCD. Notice that all of the runs where ABCD is at a plus are in block one, and all of the runs where ABCD is at a minus are in block two. Here is the alias structure for the design. 
Notice that the only term affected by the block is ABCD. This means that everything else is free and clear. Notice from the normal probability plot, it seems that main effects A, C, and D are significant, and two-way interactions A, C, and A, D may be significant. After we reduce and get the ANOVA model, we see those terms are indeed statistically significant. For this example, the fact that the sums of squares for block is large as compared to the sums of squares for error is an indication that had we not blocked, our error would be inflated. We can also confound designs into four blocks. This is only worth doing if, if there are at least four runs in each block. So we would only do this at a minimum for 16 run designs. If we run this two to the five design in four blocks, each block holds eight runs and we have three degrees of freedom for the block. This means that we need two effects to confound the block with. We get a third degree of freedom from the generalized interaction of the two effects that we confound with the block. Now, in order to decide which block each run belongs in, we will find the plus minus values for these interactions and place them in those blocks accordingly. Now, along with full factorials, we can also block in fractional factorials. You need to be aware that when we confound blocks, that we are confounding the blocks with a chain, not a single effect. That being said, you should create the fractionalization alias structure first, then decide what to confound the blocks with. Let's try an example. Let's create a design with six factors and 16 runs. We will also need to create this in two blocks. We will first create the fractionalization alias structure. Based on this design, we will use generators ABCE and BCDF. Notice here that ABC and BCD have the same number of letters in them. Notice also that we have two chains that do not include main effects or two ways. We will choose one of them to confound with the blocks. We choose the ABF chain. Now here is the overall alias structure for the entire design. You can see here that the blocks are confounded only with higher order interactions. We can also block in foldovers. Usually foldovers are done in two different periods of time. We will take this variation into account by blocking on time. Here is some advice on dealing with the idea of blocking. You always want your error estimate to be as accurate as possible. So if there's anything that you think might introduce variability that you're not interested in, then you want to try to block on that variable. 